So a little bit on me, I, like I said, I'm a videographer. Uh, I actually took the mass comm classes down at Rock Valley College. And uh, so it was, there was a really amazing hands-on experience for me to be able to get into uh, learning how to do video instead of learning about it in a classroom, like at film school, et cetera. Um, you go there and you learn about theory and you learn about a whole bunch of other different processes and, and uh, Rock Valley, it's kind of like, here's the gear, go make stuff for, for your classes. And uh, so I went there and I just started making work. And as I was making work, people caught on to the fact that I was doing video and I was doing it affordably because, you know, I'm this young kid. And at the time, we're talking 2000, 2001, that long ago was when I started. And uh, so at the time, technology was uh, fairly affordable compared to what it had been before. And uh, so this is something where I was able to get in and got on the ground floor. And the, my first project that I did was actually Mayor Morrissey's TV commercials for when he won the election. That was my first gig was actually doing the mayor's TV commercials, like as a, as a full-fledged independent professional. That's what it was. It was a lot, of, a lot of fun. But because of that, I didn't graduate from Rock Valley. I just started doing work from there. So I don't have a degree. I am short, a credit, few credit shorts. Uh, of an associate's degree. And so I'm very much a skilled worker in video and that's all I have. And so when, when COVID happened, uh, it was really frustrating because of the fact that I only knew video and now I was doing this project called Our City, Our Story that I had started. So it was a self-funded project and, it's, and I had sponsors, but the major sponsor that I had was the Tourism Bureau. And well, as COVID happened, the tourism industry collapsed. And so the, that sponsorship ended. And so back in, back in March, I basically had, was left with no possible income from the thing that I had trained for, for the past, you know, close to 20 years. Uh, and so that's, that was my career. That's, you know, I was really frustrated. Um, and, uh, a little background on me is I'm diagnosed bipolar, uh, type two type dipo, uh, bipolar. And uh, so I am already someone that's a little bit on edge when scenarios aren't going the way that you want them to. Um, so it was a very frustrating situation for me. But uh, my girlfriend, uh, she, she was, I was living with her because we moved in together to, uh, uh, to go through the quarantine when that happened. Uh, so she brought home some paint. And she's like, I haven't done anything creative in a very long time. And so she started painting. And there were a couple extra canvases left over. A little bit extra, little bit extra paint was left over. And so I started putting up, like, started painting, just doing stuff and painting. And started posting online. And people liked the work that I was doing. And I was having a little bit of fun. And then the 317 Art Collective. They did this art battle and, you know, tongue in cheek, I entered this thing because it's like, whatever. And I just, like legit just started painting. I've never done abstract oil painting, just did it. And uh, the fun thing was that I came runner up in that entire contest. I beat out people that I admired and people that are phenomenal artists. And I'm just literally throwing oil paint on canvas and making stuff. And uh, it was really eye-opening like oh my the the stuff that I'm doing is actually people like what I do which was fun because it was just something that I do and painting is the polar what I do is the polar opposite from doing video production video production you gotta coordinate with your talent you gotta show up and at a certain designated time and when you schedule your people, so you got to coordinate when those people are going to arrive. And then you have to show when you're going to be there. And then when you get on set, you got to worry about lighting. You got to worry about sound. You got to worry about uh, filming. And all that is highly technical. I mean, you've got to read your scopes. You've got to determine when the lighting's best in your situation. Listen to monitor audio. And sometimes when you have a, like on set, you have to go over an entire crew and maintain a whole crew. So it's just a, it's something that is a highly technical thing. And when it comes to doing painting, it's literally the opposite for me. Whenever I show up, I look at 
uh, whenever I look up, I have like, or whenever I show up, I come to my studio, which I'm going to give you a little quick tour of, come to my studio and just kind of make things happen. So like this piece here is something that is, looks a little bit like flowers, but it's just paint thrown on canvas. I mean, you can get a, I don't know if it's focused or not, but it gives you a sense of like just how thick the globs of paint are on here. And then like this other piece is one where it's done in a similar process, but at the top here, what I did is I put a whole bunch of paint on, just globbed it on, and then threw some oil, uh, some uh, odorless mineral spirits on it. And it kind of just dribbled down and made waterfalls looking type thing. That's what the person that purchased this said, it looks like waterfalls to them. And I'm not gonna correct them because it is what it is. But uh, so it's been, a, it's something that is really different than working with video. Like I just let the stuff go as it goes. And it's really fun. Um, and uh, so Amy, I see your question here and I never work with acrylics because I wouldn't be able to do what I did here. Like I, I'm able to, I throw the stuff on and if I don't like it, I can scrape it off if I want because oil takes forever to dry, which is the best, <laughs> which, is, which is the best and the worst thing about it because it's positive and negative where like if I don't like something, like for example, I'll put up another piece here. Ooh, one-handed, do this. And throw this piece up where like all this, I scraped off from underlaying. So that is something that like, I, I threw layers on, but most of it is scraped off. And it's, it's that's where it comes in like this technical, this technical like flip of if I make a mistake, I can just scrape it, scrape it off and reveal something underneath that was just as beautiful underneath uh, and had no idea, even though I was unhappy with the current product. Um, I thought I saw another question. Xavier, if you want to see any questions on here that are interesting, you can jump on. Yeah, so Kate asked, um, is, is paint the only medium you want to work with or are there other mediums you want to try like pastels? The, the tricky part is like, the reason that this works for me is something that it's a release. And the fact that it's completely embracing the non-technical unplanned aspects of what throwing oil paint on a surface does. Like for example, I'm gonna do it right here. And I'll, I have no idea what's gonna look like, but I took, how I go with when I start is I take like this plate full of many different colors. And then with a paper towel, put in oil, uh, mineral spirits in there, which is paint thinner. And then I take, and one of my first things is, this has already got some stuff on it. I'm not happy with what it is. So I just kind of figure out what I'm doing. Just apply and just go from there. And, you know, the really just embrace the, how the things come across and, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing. These, this, yeah, I don't know, just kind of working as you're working and embrace the idiosyncrasies of what this painting in broad strokes gives you. And when I work with other mediums or when I plan out this stuff, I just don't necessarily like what I get. And it's just doing this abstract kind of expressionistic uh, way gives me an interesting look. I'm gonna move this painting over here before I get anything on it because someone had purchased this one. Um, so I'm gonna hit it again, this thing over here with uh, some more mineral spirits. And you know, it's kind of got a, I don't know, water wavy thing. And I'm actually hit it directly onto uh, the canvas. If I can open up this thing, there we go. I'm gonna hit up some of the bottom ones. And this is the whole, I'd call the white ones on the other one, gave this whole 
look of like waterfall type thing. That's what's happening right here similarly. What did I do? I don't know. Um, there was two types of blue, a white and a Payne's gray on the, on the paper towel as I was painting. And uh, one of these things like I just evaluate what I take a look at, I evaluate what I just did. And you know, it has a little bit starker here than it is back here. So I may want to balance that out a bit. Um, but so my first tool is attacking it with a paper towel and doing these really broad strokes. And again, that is something that it's, 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 it's embracing what you can't control. Because in video and my life, I try to control too much. And if this is something that I'm able to just tune everything out, lose myself in the unexpected, that helps me process a lot of the stress that I have. And uh, really takes that ability to uh, know that not everything is in my control. So that's, that's part of the therapeutic part of doing this abstract expressionistic type feeling because, you know, it's, it's, I get a lot of stress and positive ups and downs in life. And this is one time where I can kind of step out of the cycle of chaos in my mind and just let it go. Pablo, there's another quick question. Um, do you stretch your own canvas or do you buy pre-made? The answer is yes, it's both. So I have, uh, I have right here, um, I buy 30 inch by 40 inch. Uh, like this is my main one that I have. Like this is my main size that I go with, 30 inch by 40 inch. I purchased them on Amazon and they come in this great big box here. But when I want to do something interesting, like, I don't know, do like an eight foot by a four foot canvas I do stretch my own so you can see here that that's a that's a four foot by eight foot frame and that frame is above another six foot by four foot frame if they're not that typical 30 inch by 40 inch size that I buy in bulk canvases then I typically stretch and make my own um, but predominantly I work with pre-stretched canvas because I can sometimes make like four paintings in a night and so it allows me just to take and throw up many different many different canvases and jump from one to the other, you know, see what's what I'm feeling with. It's like this one, I would want to let this one dry before I moved on to it. Um, I think I'll take another stab at this here in a second. Is there any other questions? Um, yeah, there is. I just want to make a quick comment before I, I mention the next question, but because um, it's so interesting as you're talking about this. So I've, I've, I'm a painter. I love to paint and it's been okay. something that I've expressed myself, but it's interesting as you're talking because um, I literally, I like the control. Like the one thing with oil paints that I have a hard time with is not having control of the paint. And yeah. so it's so interesting to just hear your dynamic of it and how that kind of helps you release. Where when I tried oil painting a long time ago, um, I couldn't, like it was hard for me not to have control of the paint. Like I had to, and even watercolors, like you let watercolor just go, right? And that was yeah. very difficult for me because I have this control issue. <laughs> and so um, it's just interesting as you're, you know, talking about this, like how you're just letting this allows you to let go of control. And now I'm kind of excited and thinking maybe I need to try it again and take it from that perspective and see if I can, you know, if it, if it does something a little different for me. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, when I was taking some classes down at Rock Valley way back when, um, the we had to do some uh like some drawings of figure drawings live nude figure drawings and i was drawing these characters and we had to use oil pastel and then i just accidentally i dropped some oil paint thinner on the canvas and it just kind of dripped out all the oil that was there and i enjoyed the kind of craziness and that's i mean that's that's why i agreed to do this panel is like everyone typically has all this control when they get to it. And as a person that needs to have control in life and control in my job, this is something that has just happened that mm -hmm. I, was been my release. And now this is actually my primary income right now. I have sold 56 paintings since I first started painting back in March. 
So this is something where, or was it February? I don't remember, but it was like the beginning of this year. And just simply painting and posting on Facebook, this is what I'm making. And this release of this uncontrolled expression creating a source of income for me has been very transformational. And I mean, it's the sense of like, if you're talking about you want to do something that lessens your control because you're always controlling with oil paint, do it. You don't know what's going to happen from it. Yeah. Well, it looks like I'm not the only one because there's other people that say they have the same issue with control <laughs> and trying yeah. watercolors and things like that. So I'm glad it's not just me. Um, another question that Kate asked was, have you done or thought about doing time lapse videos of creating your art? I've done some of it. Um, the frustrating part that I look upon is like, now we're getting back into like making sure that my camera's on and rolling and going with it. And all of a sudden it introduces that more technical aspect into something that's a complete and total release for me. So it's like at one time, yeah, it's, it's, I could do that. Um, and it then starts turning into something a little bit more into marketing and then I'm embracing that a little bit more. And right now it's at the crossroads of fun and entertaining and therapeutic. So like all these things are like those two crossroads are happening. And mm -hmm. the more that I kind of get into that and start making these promotional materials, I'm like stepping back into doing video a little bit more. And it's like, that's what I'm trying to get away from I need needing that break. And that's a, that's, that's where I'm sitting is like, okay, now I know I do marketing. I'm in the marketing world. So now do I dive full into doing painting full time? I mean, thankfully right now, this past week, week and a half, um, I've been working on this project for the Tourism Bureau. And uh, so I've been doing this commercial that they want to do. And the interesting thing is like, that's the first time I touched my video camera since like February. And so that is something that it's, it's been a, <laughs> it's been a hard process to get into, but like it's, it's uh, compartmentalized. Like I still, and now I'm going back to my nerve wracking, stressful, finding individuals to be in these commercials, scheduling when they're going to come, waiting for them. Cause there's that, the part of me, that, that controlling part, like, I want to know now, you know, tell me, can you do it now? Like, I, I don't, I don't want to wait for the process. I'm going to ask you, tell me if you can do it now, instead of like, Oh, uh, I have to ask them when they'll get back to you. Like just that's that added stress of, you know, this whole doing video aspect of commercials. Um, and so like, this is something where, I'd be opening the door a little bit more if I was starting to do videos of my work, but I think inevitably that's what's going to have to happen. And, uh, cause it's, I'm not finding work elsewhere. So I think I have to dive fully into this. At least I know I'll be doing paintings for a while. Um, cause, uh, thankfully people like my stuff. Um, but you know, it's so far it's only on Facebook and it's my friend group. I've, very lucky that our city, our story has given me a large network of individuals that are, that, that like the work that I'm doing. And, you know, sometimes it's some people purchase the support because they know, you know, they don't, ne don't know necessarily my full narrative that I'm not making any money from video or our city or story because all my sponsorship dropped out, but they recognize that someone's doing an artistic thing and they want to support artists during this pandemic. And a lot of my support has come from that, I think. And I think I know that uh, one person is, you know, an early on purchased my work that way. And then she turned around and commissioned a larger piece from me for her living. And she's like, I love your work. And it's like, great, thank you. And, uh, but it, early on, it was just something, something to support me in my new endeavor. Gotcha. What kind of advice would you give someone to kind of get started painting again that maybe painted in the past and they're, they haven't for a while. Um, Amy was asking what, what advice can you give her on getting started painting again? Stop overthinking. <laughs> just do. Cause that's the thing is like, that's, that's with this whole process. It's like, you really can, you can overthink too much into it. Um, and I think as someone who lives with mental illness, I, put way too much weight on other people's words. And a lot of that infiltrates into my head and it becomes this absolute chorus of uh, negative voices because it just ricochets in there. And when I just say, when I just shut it all out and just start doing, turns out the only voice that's in my head is the lyrics and the music that I'm listening to. So basically just do and embrace it as something that you want to do 
And that's all that matters. Can you, she was asking too, can you do it on a budget? Like what's your suggestions on, you know, doing it on a low budget? Um, so when I started out, I bought uh, assorted packs of oil paint. <laughs> I see that, Amy. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm living, I'm pretty broke too. So I'm, I'm this, all this has been done on the budget because all I've been, the only income lately that I've been making has been off of paintings. But uh, I buy these, so the 30 by 40 packs of, <laughs> the 30 or 40 packs of, uh, or, sorry, you can buy assorted or you can buy packs of canvas on Amazon. They're very affordable to go that way. You know, you can get for a hundred bucks, you can get like a four pack of 24 by 36 inch canvas. So you get four for that. And then for 40, for if you're gonna go oil paint, you can buy these assorted packs of oil paint. Don't go with the cheapest, cheap, cheapest. Go with like the medium range. There's some for like 40 bucks. So you get eight different, eight different colors and go from there. Uh, all this was started basically on a budget and it's been sustained on a budget and it's been, uh, it's, you know, you're dancing the edge of profitability of living, putting gas in your car and being able to do what I do. Because the hard part about this is that I don't see myself as an artist and I don't want to be paid like an artist. I think I'm a painter and I try to make sure that what I'm doing, cause I'm painting in broad strokes. I'm not doing stuff that is, I'm not doing stuff that I don't, I view other people in town and other people that do other work are artists. And I don't claim myself to be, I'm not trying to challenge anyone with the work that I'm doing. I'm just doing this expressive stuff. And if you see stuff and take stuff, something from that, great. That's awesome. That's what think, that's what the world is supposed to do for you. And uh, basically like, let the, let your expression be your expression and don't try to affix any type of labels or anything greater to it than what it is. Well, it's interesting you made that comment because I remember, so I worked at 317 um, Studio uh, before it was transitioned over. And I remember saying that same exact thing to someone. I'm like, well, I don't consider myself an artist. And um, this is the question they asked me. So I'm gonna ask you this question and put you on the spot. <sighs> Do what's it. the difference what's the difference between an artist and a painter uh for me i feel like it's the outcome if in fact you're intending to make a comment or a commentary on something then that makes you an artist i think if you're just simply and if you consider yourself an artist then you're an artist but if someone someone can consider me an artist that's fine i just don't consider myself an artist it's just this label that i don't intend to ever take because I hold it in such high regard. Um, does that make sense? Gotcha. It's, yeah. a per, it's a perspective thing. Like, again, a painter is someone that paints and applies canvas or oil to canvas or, you know, uh, color onto any type of surface. Um, so basically that's, that's what I do and I, I view myself. Um, some people have called me an artist and I won't correct them, but I just don't view myself that way. Okay. Um, one more question, uh, looks like, what do you like to listen to when you paint? I've been asked sometimes what's my favorite band and my favorite band is, I don't have one cause there's so many different people that I like. Um, but the band that I can listen to almost anything by their entire catalog is a band called cinematic orchestra and it's their down tempo jazz type stuff. But lately, I've been into Jacob Collier. Uh, he's this absurdly young kid from uh, United Kingdom. And he's just this brilliant, brilliant. He makes all these, of course, uh, uh, this beautiful orchestral soundscapes from these songs. And it's just absolutely brilliant. Um, but typically, open up Spotify and listen to Daily Mix. And it plays off of what I like, uh, the songs that I like. Nothing are really too choreographed, but you know, on my Apple watch and just go and say next song or play that song back again. I'm all, I'm really, I like to embrace the spontaneity of not only my work, but like the music that comes to the stream. So I don't really play too much. I don't, I don't pick out what's being played too much. I like, you know, stuff that's introduced to me. Gotcha. So Zach had a question. Um, would you say that the process that you've been going through with your art is one of discovery? 
Oh, completely. I mean, the thing that I love about that is I was just thinking about it as I was just talking, like by the same process that I love music to be introduced to me, it's the same way that I go through documentary process is it's, I considered the documentary process like a digital collage because you go through and like you ask questions and you try to discover and you do follow the investigative trail of where the story is going to lead you. Cause sometimes on some documentaries, uh, you don't know what the story is until it's presented itself to you. Like you can go into something with your assumptions and prejudge what you think the story is going to be and, you know, got to go around that, but you have to be open to a, be nimble to where the story takes itself. And so the same process of doing this completely is discovery. Like, I don't know what I just made today, but we'll see how it all plays itself out. I wanted to actually create a whole thing on camera. On that <laughs> phone. I wanted to do a whole video on camera, uh, uh, the process of doing this whole entire thing on camera, but uh, it just didn't pan out the way I wanted it to, which is okay. Embrace the, embrace the moments as they happen. Right. We do have a couple extra uh, other questions from Janice that I, I missed in the Q and A. Um, she said, since you are using oils and your application is on the thick side, how many days does it typically, typically take for your painting to dry? Three and to four weeks. Three to four weeks? Yeah. Weeks. <laughs> wow. Weeks. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's just, that's just the, that's the process. Okay. She was wondering too, she's in an apartment and she's not, and about the oil um, vapors. Yeah. Um, do you have ventilation in your studio for the winter? I've got a window that opens and I'm right near the window. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, Typical oil paint thinner has a lot of obnoxious fumes. Um, and the way I work is actually not preferred for your, for your health. Um, I was very judicious in my application of paint thinner early on. And uh, so I had like a sore throat and uh, got nauseous. And early on, I thought that I had... COVID actually went in and got tested based upon these symptoms that I had turned out the, the, I was in a different studio than the one that I am now a lot smaller and uh, didn't have ventilation and it was caused by the paint thinner. So uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't have the symptoms of COVID, but I had the symptoms of COVID, but it was caused by the paint thinner and I still use it the way I did, did before, except I use, uh, I use gloves now. And uh, I do open the window frequently, but I'm in a larger space. Right. Okay. Um, so another question Janice had was, uh, where can we find you on Facebook if they're interested in, in finding you? Yeah, Pablo Corona, my P-A-B-L-O, K-O-R-O-N-A, and that's Corona with a K. Um, and... I, like, I usually say Corona with uh, Corona like the beer, but with a K. But now I can say Corona like the virus, but with a K. Eesh. One day a FedEx came, a FedEx guy came to my door and he dropped off a pack. He was like, all right, what's your last name? I'm like, Corona. He's like, oh, <laughs> that's an unfortunate last name to have. And then turned away and walked. That's funny. Um, so Chris, Kristen had a good question. She says, do you think now that you have been painting for a while versus doing videography, that you feel less stressed overall in your everyday life and that it's carried you over or improved other aspects of your life? The ability for me to check out and sidestep some of my problems by disappearing into painting has allowed me to be, it's like a meditative uh, state that I enter here. Sometimes, sometimes uh, ideas come into my mind and then I push them out. I acknowledge them and then push them out like meditation. Um, and then it allows me to enter into those frustrating moments or frustrating decisions or frustrating life with a clearer head. So the answer is yeah. Um, but it is something that uh, it's it, video is something that is compounding stress. It's like work, you know, everybody knows work and the work that, that you go through is just compounding stress. And if you don't have that thing that is that release, then you enter into those problematic scenarios with that extra stress. 
So yeah, it's helped me a lot. Awesome. Um, Melissa asked if, if and when we return to normal, do you see this as being something you'll continue to do, even if you go back to normal and are working in videography? I think, I think the answer is this is something that I'm always going to be doing in addition to video. Um, unfortunately, from the economic standpoint, because it's now my part time job. And thankfully, and I mean, think that I don't know what my the next I don't know what this fall looks like. I mean, we're into the fall. Um, but into the next into the next year, I have no idea. But I stumbled into this. And people like what I make. And I need it the whole point that I agreed to doing this entire talk is the fact that I need it for my own therapeutic sanity. That it's something that I'm able to do that um, allows me to approach those day to day problems with a less stressed head. Um, so that's something that I completely see this happening. I've not announced it, but it's currently in its early phases in December. We're looking to do an art show. Uh, me and a couple friends are going to do a group show. Um, it's still in its early workings, but it is something that uh, we will see. Um, we'll see what happens with it. But this is something that, you know, given the COVID restrictions, I don't know what all is going to look like, but we'll figure out. Um, but it's something that this whole world of creation and doing paintings and art is all new to me. So I have no idea. I'm just very thankful that the people that I'm friends with on Facebook see my work and hire me to do commissions and buy the stuff that I make because it speaks to them. So I'm very thankful. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I know, you know, part of the reason why we wanted to do these is, is specifically just to show people that there's other forms of therapy that you can do yourself, right? Or you can do at your home or in your garage or in a studio if you're, if you're fortunate to have one um, yeah. to just help yourself. Because, you know, a lot of people that are struggling with mental health issues, they, they only get in to see a counselor or a therapist once a week. So what can we do in the interim, right? Um, on those right. days that we're struggling, but we can't get to see a therapist to be able to release some of that stress and to you know get in that meditative state as you mentioned um and find a form of release so you know these are different ideas that we're introducing people to consider and do because it's an important part of our mental health absolutely it's how we take care awesome. of ourselves when we're not able to how we take care of ourselves when we're not able to be in the care of a trained professional i mean that's right that's all the best we can do is to that's all we, that's actually what we're supposed to do. Figure out how to take care of ourselves in that situation so that we can stand up on our own and live. Right. Well, thank you so much. Did you have anything else you wanted to share with me? Does anybody have any additional questions? I think I answered them all. I'm good on my end. I don't know what, I'm all new to this whole Zoom stuff, so. <laughs> well, you did pretty good. <laughs> no complaints there. Um, yeah, Thank you, Melissa. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you saw that. So, um, looks like all the questions are answered. Um, I just, I'm going to hop back on video with you and say thank you for being willing to open up, share your own journey, share your, um, painting, um, and expression of yourself. And thank you for that. Um, tomorrow night, like I said, seven o'clock on Zoom, you can find all the information out and pre-register on the NAMI website. We will be doing the social services introduction. So if you don't know, you know, even if you don't know it yourself, if you're not aware of all the great resources and organizations that we have offering support, um, please tune in tomorrow and hear about all the great organizations locally that are supporting individuals with mental health struggles um, so that you can better educate yourself and help someone that you may encounter that needs that support or needs that connection to that resource. Um, and then Friday at noon, we hope to see you on the rally. Again, it's all virtual. So hop on, eat your lunch with us and join us. And again, thank you, Pablo, for joining us tonight and being um, sharing your art with us. We truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been my honor. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for joining us.